Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the Spring Tutorial series. In this video, we will see how we can set up the Spring MVC for our dynamic web project. Let's create one dynamic web project first. Let's name it as Spring MVC. Okay, now before we can use Spring MVC, we need to add the Spring Jars in our class path. What I will do, I will create one user library and put all the Spring Jars into that user library. So that later in some other project, we can use that library instead of adding Jar files separately in every project. So let's go ahead and create the user library first. Right click on the project, click on properties. Go to Java build path. Then go to library section. Here we have something called add library. Click on this. Then select on this user library. Next. Then we need to create a user library. Create a new user library. Give it a name. Spring library. Okay. okay, now we can add jar files to this user library. Now click on this add external jars. What I have done, I have already downloaded the Spring distribution in my local in this folder. So we have to just go to the lips folder and here we have all the jars. We can just copy it all. Click OK. Finish. Okay. So now we have our Spring library added to our build path. You can see that here in our library section this one it has all the it has all the jar files which we added now we can actually start using spring related classes in our project in the last video we saw that the dispatcher subwit acts as the front controller to the spring mvc so we first need to declare the servlet in our web.xml let's do that Let's give the name as Spring MVC Dispatcher. So, the class is org dot Spring Framework dot Web dot Servlet dot Dispatcher Servlet. Okay, now once we have declared this dispatcher servlet, all the requests will now go through this dispatcher servlet as we have put slash star here in our URL pattern. So now our HTTP request will be catered by the Spring dispatcher servlet. So this was the basic setup needed for the Spring MVC. And there is one point to note about this name here for this dispatcher servlet. Now it has got one significance. Now by default, when dispatcher servlet loads, what it will do, it will try to read one configuration XML file. Now every Spring application generally has one configuration XML file. So Spring MVC also tries to search for such a file in our web application. Now it searches for the XML file based on the name of this servlet, which we have provided here. Since we have named our front controller as the Spring MVC dispatcher, so the dispatcher servlet searches for a file named as spring mvc dispatcher hyphen servlet.xml under the webinar folder along with the web.xml file. So this was the significance of the name given to the dispatcher servlet. Right now we don't have any such file present in our web application so we will not actually bother about it. But we can provide one if you want. We will learn about that configuration file and its elements in the subsequent videos. 
So this was the basic setup needed for the Spring MVC application. This is it for this video. We will see some more stuff of Spring MVC and Spring's other modules in the next video. Thanks for watching.